going to recognize the member for Kiwetanong on a point of order. Point of order, uh, Speaker. If you seek it, you will find unanimous consent to allow me to speak for 10 minutes regarding the historic significance of recognizing Indigenous languages in this legislature. Mr. Mamakwa is seeking the unanimous consent of the House to allow him to speak for 10 minutes regarding the historic significance of recognizing Indigenous languages in the legislature. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. I recognize the member for Kiwetanong. I'd like to say thank you to everyone present. I am very grateful, thankful for the opportunity to be able to speak by and to have everyone in Indigenous OG Cree language in this legislature. I am speaking for those that couldn't use their language and also those people from Kiwetnuk. Not only those from uh, Kiwetnuk. but for every Indigenous person on Ontario, in Ontario. We know, we know that there is an Ansinimoan Ujikri language that is becoming extinct. The government years, years ago prohibited uh, Ansinimoan from being spoken. The language was taken from us by the arrival of the settlers in the colonization and residential school. The history that has removed the children from our ways of life. Sometimes even soap was used to wash their mouth for speaking their Anshinimoan Ojikri language. They were punished for speaking their own language. They were given manual labor for speaking in their own language in residential schools. So today I am very happy and thankful and proud. I just feel it's just almost like a, a, an immense feeling that I feel. I thank every one of you, my colleagues here on, 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 in front of me, in the back of me, my colleagues, I thank every one of you for supporting us in, in revitalizing our indigenous and First Nation language. And also for the guests that are looking, looking up from the lofts. It's a great event, a historic event. There, there's people here that, that represent our language. That's why I still speak this language myself. For my mom that's here, that's celebrating her birthday. She used to take me out into the wilderness, into the land, teaching me the language. That's why I'm able to speak my First Nations language because of my mom. She taught me. And also other people, also the youth, the children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, they need to continue on in their First Nations language so that they can speak their own language. Everyone that's listening, we need to revitalize our First Nations language. Teach your children to speak their First Nations language and to be proud of it.
It's, it's almost been six years that I've been sitting in this chamber, in this legislature. Two weeks ago, I went to Big Trout Lake. I, I met with an elder and I spoke with him and I said to him, this is what I'm going to be doing in, in the next two weeks in the legislature, provincial legislature to speak my native language. He told, he, he told me, when I was listening to you, I can tell you were beginning to lose your language, your dialect, your Uji Cree language. I, I, I'm beginning to lose my own language. Even for the six years that I've been here, I'm slowly losing my Aboriginal language. He understood me. That elder understood me that I was losing my language. And I said, and I said thank you to him. And it's just such a great pleasure for me here now to be able to speak my Anishinaabemon First Nations language. This morning when I woke up, I received a text. Our, 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 uh, the, the, six, the six that were jailed in 2008, this is the day that they were released from jail at that time when they were put in prison. The chief and counselors are here. They're sitting here with us that were jailed. And they're here with us in their land. They're not, they're not being prohibited or hindered. They, they are fighting for their land still and they are slowly succeeding. And I am very happy that my mother's here also, that it's her birthday today. And also, I'm, I, I'm thinking about my late dad. He must be listening from on high today. He's hearing us today. Also, I'm going to say, I'm praying that there's permission for uh, our language to be spoken in the legislature, that other, other legislatures in, in, in Canada, governments, will allow the same process that we are doing here today. In Ottawa also, that are sitting in the Ottawa legislatures, the day too will follow suit with this historic event of the Indigenous language being permitted to be spoken in this uh, provincial legislature, Queen's Park. Very important. And also, in, in speaking in Stimo and indigenous language, that's where my life comes from. As I speak my language, we, we feel secure and well in our land when we speak our own language. It's like we're one with the land. We, we, we receive strength in speaking our language, and it's like a healing medicine as we stand together that we, we stand together as indigenous people to continue fighting for our, our rights as First Nations people to speak our own native language, to work together, I would say, to work together with all, all governments. Many, in, in, in time past, in time past, we were told never to speak our own indigenous language in, in, in uh, the provincial legislature. We had a leader named Frank Birdie from Muskrat Dam that was, to, that was told that they will, they will never permit indigenous language to be spoken in the provincial legislature. But today, it's allowed. It's a historical event. I'd like to say 
Thank you to everyone, my colleagues, the elders, the youth, our, our non-native brothers that are here, the ladies, women, young people, elders. We appreciate coming for the attendance. Thank you for showing us the support for the change today. That's a hitting moment we are in. And that's where our strength is in our language, our people, and our relationship to everything that is living. That is who we are and who will continue to be living in our good life, in our language. That's who we are. We will, we will live the good life and we will work together. We will all work together. Everyone that's listening, we will all work together. And this is just an, uh, a historic event for me. I'm so thankful for allowing me to be able to speak my own indigenous First Nations and Snobemoan language in this uh, government legislature today. Thank you, every one of you, for such a great privilege and honor to be able to speak my First Nations indigenous language. Sometimes it just overwhelms my heart today of what's happening. And that's all I'm going to say for now. And again, I'll say thank you to everyone who came from far away here today and also everyone that's sitting here listening, permitting me to speak in my First Nations language. This is a great day. Thank you. Miigwech. Thank you. It is now time for oral questions. I recognize the member for Kiwetanong. Miigwech. Thank you. Elder care and long-term care in Sulakaut and Kiwetanook is not meeting the needs of our communities. The lack of new long-term care beds in Sulakaut has led to emergency department and hospital beds being used by those who would otherwise be in the long-term care. Will Ontario ensure the elders of Kuwaitnuk have access to the care and resources they need. And that there'll be funding provided to, to, to build the extended care. Minister of Long-Term Care. Thank you, Speaker. You know, some things are bigger than politics, and I believe that's one of those moments this morning. Miigwech to the Honourable Member for that question. <laughs> um, Speaker, what's bigger than politics also is making sure that we take care of those who took care of us. I'm, I'm also honoured to see that the member's mother is here. Happy birthday to her. Uh, I can see how important— yes. 
I can see how important his mother is uh, to the member and speaker. Certainly no difference in my life. My mother's a senior now. We have to take care of them. There's a moral ob obligation to do that. And while we have a larger capital plan to build and redevelop 58,000 new spaces in Ontario, we understand there are unique challenges when it comes to rural northern areas, particularly when it comes to Indigenous communities. Speaker. That's why our government has specific programs catered towards Indigenous communities. I was just in Tamiskaming Shores to announce 128 new spaces, uh, predominantly for the Indigenous Response. communities. They are part of a larger plan, 18 projects associated with First Nations. Speaker. 997 new, 221 upgraded beds, but we're going to continue to work with that member to make sure we address the needs in Sulu. Thank you. Community members in Sulakout have organized sending letters, postcards, and petitions to this government. Not only uh, the, the Aboriginal people of that com community of Sulakout, but also non Aboriginal people. They have been sending letters, postcards, and petitions to the government. All of this advocacy just to ask this government to fulfill a promise that they themselves made. Speaker, waiting is not acceptable when the problem is getting worse. The 76 beds promised in 2018 will not meet the need of 100 beds needed in 2025. So the beds that were promised the 76 beds promised 2018 are, are not met yet. Will this government please explain why these long-term beds in Sulakot have been delayed for six years and counting? Minister of Long-Term Care. Uh, so the first thing I'll offer to the member opposite, uh, I know this is a hugely important issue to that member, it is to me as well. Come to my office and we can go through the process together and the challenges that are facing the allocation of 76 that are outstanding. Now, Speaker, while we work on the challenge of Sioux Lookout, we have uh, produced results when it comes to the Indigenous communities through long-term care, and I look to Niagara Falls, 32 new spaces, uh, Toronto Centre, 128 new spaces. As I said, Speaker, 18 projects, 997 new spaces, 221 redeveloped spaces specifically for First Nations. I want to go back to, to Ms. Ming Shores, Speaker, when I was there, talking about Indigenous services delivered in native languages with culturally appropriate care. This is hugely important to me. I come from a culturally diverse background. I understand the importance of that in your life. Our seniors deserve to live out their golden years understanding, speaking the language that they spoke, eating the foods that they're accustomed to. This is hugely important to the Premier and to this government. Speaker, I commit to work with that Response. member to make sure that we get this done for Sioux Lookout. Please come to my office. We'll continue this journey along the path to building those for 76 new spaces. Speaker, I am joined today with my mother, Kiza. Elders like my mother and other elders should not have to wait seven years to access a long-term care bed in Sioux Lookout. The system is failing them. It is not too late for this government to finally expand the long-term care facility that people across Kuwaitnuk have been waiting for for far too long already. Will the government finally come through on their 2018 promise to create 76 more long-term long care beds in Sioux Lookout? When? To reply, the Premier. No, oh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And you know, folks wondered what I was saying to you, Saul, and sorry for using your first name, but this is, this is a different situation. I had you in my office yesterday, told you how proud I am of you, how you're blazing a new trail, you know, and no one's ever done this, what you're doing today, and I just want to tell you, tell you that how proud I am of you, 
how proud everyone here in the legislature, how proud everyone in the First Nations. And I, I appreciate your passion in Sioux, uh, Sioux Lookout. I went up to Sioux Lookout, and you remember I went up there, and I committed that I'm going to build that long-term care home. I'm committing today in the public we will be building those beds. We'll be building a home for Sioux Lookout. So thank you. The next question, I recognize the Leader of His Majesty's Loyal Opposition.